Hi guys. Hi hi. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, ikama ngo asanda ngantini and welcome to my channel. Uh my throat is quite thingy. Anyways, with that said, um let's do this video. I you guys on my last video that i'll do a video on my career progression on how i've actually been and just to encourage you guys to not give up and yeah so uh i've actually been employed since it was legally as soon as it was i was legally allowed to work in south africa i was employed since i was 15 i've worked and that's working part time during holidays I was working in a resort and um working in a resort washing dishes laundry and sometimes cleaning but it was mostly dishes and laundry for like the guests that are there and they would be in self catering it was like a caravan park set up so there would be self catering and then they would hire you to do their self catering thingies that they can't do during the holidays. That would be me every holiday since grade 10 or 11. Can't remember, but yeah. And did that until first or second year varsity. Yeah, I think it would be second year varsity. And then on my third year, I. Oh, until third year varsity. And on my fourth year, I worked during those holidays, during those December holidays, I worked at a call center uh, as a quality assurance agent. And then, yeah, <laughs> did that until obviously start restarting semester the following year in February. So I've actually worked at a call center. And then now let's speak about my career in the legal profession. First things first. Uh, as some of you know, I didn't know that I had to do articles in order to be a legal advisor. I didn't think I wanted to do to be in practice and just basically be a, a litigation attorney that I am today. So I wasn't in like applying for that while as normal people would be doing. <laughs> like people are, I always encourage people to apply as soon as you are in second year or even first year. So I wasn't interested in that until the last year where I was like, fi my final year where I was like, I'm actually not getting interviews for these jobs of legal advisors. And I'm also seeing that they want you to be admitted or at least have two years experience, which is the amount of experience you'd have if you are doing articles. So I applied, I got a job and in articles, I was earning like below minimum wage. <laughs> like I did that for two years. I was earning like 2.5. I'm not even making this up. I'm not lying about that. Did that for... <laughs> I did that. Did my articles. So I was so grateful to be actually be doing articles, getting the experience. And that's what I wanted to do. That's why I was able to actually do it for two years with earning that amount of money I was like I don't care I wasn't even applying that's the funniest thing I think I applied once went to an interview didn't like the firm I was like no then I was contacted by an attorney very strange who came into our offices to consult and then contacts me and says he'd like me to be his candidate attorney was offering me even more but I was like nah I don't think you'll give me the experience that I want so yeah, I did that. And then as soon as I finished my articles, like I finished my articles on the 10th, on the 11th, I started working in-house for one of my uncle's companies. It's an entertainment industry. So I was working in-house, working from home, earning a good salary, but I was bored. I was really bored because I hardly did anything legal and I was like no this is not what I studied for but I was still waiting for my admission and 
so I couldn't really say I'm going to be an associate. Point. I just didn't feel that I wanted to be in practice at that time and also just not uh, back in the same city. I wanted to move to Durban. So fast forward, uh, I, say, I said to myself, I'm going to be working for my uncle for six months. That's the story of me and faith. I, I, I need to remind myself that whenever I say something, and I put it out into the universe, into, into, into the world and in, in faith saying that this is what God will do for me. In my career, it always happens. I, always, I, I said I will, not, I will never need a job. And every time I leave a job, I always have a job. And every time when I say I'm going to leave a job at a, at a particular time, I always leave it and I always have employment. And... That's because I always believe that I will. And that's what I would like you all to do, not just in your career, but in every other thing. If you believe that you won't ever lack money, put it into faith. Whenever you're doing something, just always say, I will never lack. Like I was earning, as I said in articles, less than 5,000, <laughs> less than 3,000 rand to be precise. But I never lacked money. I always had enough money for transport enough money to pay for my uh cell phone my cell phone internet i just never lagged and i wouldn't understand there was always provision because i believed that i would always have provision and i always had it and it was it's one of the strangest things of crazy faith that i always have about things and i want to apply it in every area of my life anyways yeah so fast forward as I had said, I, I said to myself that I will start employment. I will only work for my uncle for six months. Indeed, I worked for him for six months. I started working in February, end of July. No, end of August, I was done. Yeah, July, August. I think it was end of August. Yeah, it was end of August because I think I started on the 29th. I was also in-house for about 14 or 13 months. Worked in a very big organization, uh, which I won't, I won't name. But yeah, I was in-house, uh, labor law, enjoyed that. And I was like, okay, it's time to go. Like as soon as uh, it, was Feb, it, was, it was May, I said, okay, it's time to leave. I'm leaving this place in September. <laughs> I'm leaving this place in September. I did not have quite a plan. I said I'm leaving this place to go back to practice because I knew that in-house was just not for me. I've done it for almost two years at that point. And I was like, nope, in-house is just not for me. I like litigation. I like practice. I like the feel of practice. I was like, okay, I'm either going to be going back to work on my own. So I wasn't applying. I was like, I'm, either I'm going to work on my own law firm. I'm starting my own, I'm launching my own law firm or I'm going back to my firm where I did my articles. It was one of the two things. And in May, I emailed my, um, my principal. I remember I emailed her. That was in May, but I continued and then um, stayed until September. September, I met you tell. I was like, okay, I'm coming back. And it was, it was one of those things that it was September the 20, 25th, I think. Yeah, it was September the 25th. I met with, I, I resigned from work on September the 20th or 21st. And I said, when people asked me where am I going, I said, I'm going to be go, going back to my old firm. I'm going to be working there full time as an associate. There was no offer in place. <laughs> it was just a meeting in place that we're going to meet on Monday and speak about this and I was like I'm going back no matter what and it was not a matter of money matter of anything at that point I was like I'm going back to practice because I want to be there then I stayed there and something in like January then the, February I think February I was like okay um this was good but it's time to leave I was like okay uh yeah it was january end of january i was like okay i'm leaving this place in april 
still no offer again. <laughs> I was like, I'm leaving this place in April to an extent that I went to my gym and did a gym membership for three months. So it was February, March, April. It was going to end in April because I was leaving in April. I even said that to the person. They were like, why are you taking such a shot? I was like, no, I'm leaving in April. It was like, oh, where are you going? I'm like, I'm going back to Durban. <laughs> yeah, because I was so faithful in what, what I knew God would provide for me. Though I didn't know how. I didn't know when. I legit didn't know how and when. And it happened. And then... um fast forward to it's now end of march yeah it was now end of march probably like around the 20th i'm like able i still don't have anything solid but i say i'm leaving next month what is this gets a i was applying at that time because i knew i can't now afford to go back to go and open my own practice because as i said it wasn't about money coming back to that firm. So I had to sustain myself with all of my savings and like savings that I had to in order for me to be able to stay for I think five months that I stayed. So I was like, okay, I need to leave. If I don't leave, obviously, <laughs> Zong Kalela, because I can't afford to be here as of next month or as of whatever month. Financially and mentally, I had told myself I'm leaving in April. I'm like, okay, what is this now? Around 20th of March, I was applying. Then I'd like, because when you apply, you get a lot of regrets. I was getting a lot of those and I was like, Hi, what is this? But I obviously continued, continued applying. Then I got a, an email, a uh, LinkedIn message from the director of the firm that I'm currently in. Apparently there was a mistake and, and me receiving the, the regret was asked to then do the first stage of the application process again. Did it, did an interview, got the job on the 1st of April, 2024. I've shared the story before. Got the job on the, so I was then an associate. And then I'm currently here even now. And I'm like, yeah, I'm doing this because this happened because of your faith. I don't know if maybe you want to give up or whatever, but just not just in a job, but in anything that you, you put your faith in, like this is actually for me right now. I'm lacking in faith for something that I want from God so much, but I'm asking it from a place of lack. Don't ask from a place of lack. Ask from a place of having authority. You know, Unkulunkulu will provide this for me because Unkulunkulu has done this for me before. Unkulunkulu does this for me. Like, I want you guys, when you're praying, to have so much authority, to have so much faith in the things that you like. When a person is listening to you saying this, they'd be like, she's Dululu. Be Dululu about the things of faith. Be Dululu about things that God can provide for you. Just say, no, Mina, I know that God will provide this for me. I know that God is able to do this for me. God has done this for me. God does this for me. And that's how, when I look at everything, if, like, let's start with articles. In December, they'll be like, when I, I got the interview, I started speaking like, yeah, I'll be starting my articles next year. i would even say the name of the firm. And I'll be like, yeah, when we start, uh, yeah, I know, I know, I remember this because my sister made a comment like, yeah, I like how your faith is. I was like, yeah, <laughs> I know. I haven't even done the interview. I haven't even met the person, but I know I'll be working there. So yeah, have that faith, whether it's, 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 it's like, believe for something as small as doing an application for an apartment, have that faith, something as small as. They most people call it manifestation, but I always say it's manifestation of your faith. It's manifestation of what you believe God for. It's my like if you don't believe like faith, the Bible even says, if you have faith and believe in what you want, you will receive it. There's no way that you will not receive something that you believe you will receive. There's no way. Like think about the negative things you've said about a circumstance and think, and then you, you, you convince yourself and say, yeah, my gut told me I could feel it. Have that same gut for things that you, that you positively believe for. Okay. This is getting way too long. I uh, hope you guys, uh, this was helpful to anyone. And yeah, that's the video I spoke about. I will see you on my next video. Bye.